G'day cobbers, welcome back to the bush. In this video, we're going to be doing a patch repair on a tire. Now, there's a link up there somewhere on our previous video with a plug repair, and that's only a temporary solution. But now we're going to do an actual patch repair from the inside of the tire. But this one's inflated, so I better do something about that. And the worst ones, of course, are sidewall deflations, where you get a stick or something, or uh, rock or whatnot has cut up your sidewall. So we'll simulate that now. Okay, let's get into it. Okay, so we've put the spare tire on the car now, but firstly, we need to identify where the hole in the sidewall is. And we'll just put a bit of a marker pen on there so we can clearly see where that is. Now we need to fully deflate the tire. Quickest way to do that, of course, is if the air's not already leaked out, it's a Schrader valve. Okay, now we've let all the air out, we need to separate the wheel from the bead. And the easiest and simplest way of doing that is with a high lift jack. You can keep your tyre pliers and whatnot. This one uses the weight of the vehicle. Put it right on the edge. You might have to stand on the other side. There we go, that's one side. Now we'll break the other side. Very occasionally you'll get lucky and it'll actually pop off, which this one has. Now we just need to break the back side. Again with a high lift. This one's a little bit more determined. Actually lifting the car off the ground now, so we might have to turn around and give it a bit from the other side. Get it right on the edge. You're certainly stuck. Finally, finally it's broken.
Beauty, now that's done. We've broken the bead on both sides. We can take the wheel and tire assembly over into the shade and using hand tire levers, we can take the tire off the rim. All right, now we're under the shade, a little bit cooler. Let's work out what we're doing here. Firstly, we've got our tire here. Now, tires go on and off one way, and that's because of the drop well, which we'll show you later. Make sure you get the orientation correct. So these are usually balanced. So we'll put a bit of a V here in the tire, just so we know that lines up with the valve there. And we've got some long tire irons. Now, you want these levers a decent length. One of these, a tire iron this length that you know, your automotive supermarket will sell you, will do no justice at all. You need big long tire irons. And you'll see this one's got a reverse lip on it, and this one's got a straight lip on it, and that's for various parts that we'll show you soon. And also, we've got a bit of a specialist one here, and it's got a little bobble on the end there. And uh, again, we'll show you that, where that works out soon. Now, to aid you getting the tire on and off, you need some lubrication. And what we've got here is soapy water. Now, failing you don't have soapy water with you because you're only out for the day, margarine. And in a pinch, I've used water as a lubricant. It's not as good as soapy water or margarine, but any lubricant you can get hold of is a good lubricant. Rightio. So you run a bit of water, soapy water, in between the bead of the tire and the rim. Make sure it's really well lubed up. Okay, now I spoke about the well before and what you need to do is you need to push one side down into the well so you can get a longer diagonal on there. So usually the idea is stand on one side and then bring it up with the other. So push this side into the well and then your second tire iron in. A few moments later. Okay, so now we've got to work on the rear. Now, when I spoke about the drop well before, if we can see in here, this well was a little bit deeper down than the other part of the wheel here. So what you need to do is push the bead here into the well here so it gives you a little bit of extra length from the other side so you can get the tire on and off. Now, just like before, we need to put a fair bit of lubrication in there. In fact, I think the front's considerably easier to do than the rear. Okay, now we've got that off. We can make a start. A few moments later. There we go, and it's out. Simple as that. Now let's take it over the bench and do the punch repairs. Okay, firstly we'll do a bit of a rundown of the tools that we'll be using to conduct the repair. Firstly, very important, a couple of spreaders. So this fits in between the beads of the tire, just to spread it out a bit. And we've just used a bit of timber, grabbed a saw and chopped it to length. This is a tool for getting the Schrader valve in and out. Now this is a patch. This is a patch that we'll be using for the sidewall hole. Now you'll notice a couple of things about these patches. These are from Rima Tip Top, and I recommend everyone get a few of these patches for larger holes where a stick goes through your sidewall, whatever the case may be. And you can have a look on there, and it says bead. So in this way, it goes from one side of the bead to the other side of the bead, so the patch goes in like this. It doesn't go sideways like this. It goes from bead to bead. Okay, now these are mushroom repairs. Now these are the common ones you see at the, your mechanics. And they're called mushroom re repairs. Now you've got to be careful with these because you don't want to get them dirty. They actually look kind of like a mushroom, upside down mushroom. And we'll be also doing one of these repairs as well. We'll be taking out the temporary plug and this is a permanent legal repair into the tread area. Now, you need to rough up the inside to make the adhesives and whatnot stick. And to do that, we've got a carbide mushroom on the end of our drill. This is a stitching tool. So when we put down a patch, 
whether it be the mushroom or the large patch for the sidewall, we'll need to make sure we press it down and get all the air out. So it's just like putting a sticker on a vehicle to make sure you get all the air out where you push it out with a credit card or whatnot. Use the stitching tool for that. Now here we have some sealant. So this is the cement. So this is obviously how we stick down the patches. And once you've stuck down the patches, you need to make sure it's airtight. The way we do that is with the inner liner sealer, sealer, sorry, with the inner liner sealer. So inside your tire, this is a tubeless tire I'm talking about. There's like a tube that is glued to the inside of the tire. And the whole purpose of that tube that's glued to the inside of the tire is for it to remain airtight. Now, if you do happen to buff through it, and it's only a mill or two thick, you need to make sure it becomes airtight again. And the way we do that is with the inner liner sealer. And that's what the tools we'll be using. Okay, now we'll put the two spreaders in there just so we've got a decent amount of access in here. And what I'm gonna do, because there was a plug in there, so I'm just gonna run a drill bit through there. to make sure that all the plugs now are gone, the uh, temporary repair is gone, and we're getting ready for the permanent repair. Right, next up you wanna aim for your target. So our hole is there, but we need to buff around it. So give yourself a gen general area, give yourself a generous area around it. A good two centimeters larger than the actual patch itself. As you can see, the hole is in the middle here, and we've given ourselves a generous area for which to buff. Now we'll get the wheel onto it, start buffing away. Now when you're buffing, you're not trying to buff through to the other side. What you're trying to get is a nice flat surface for your adhesive to adhere to. This will take a couple of minutes. Rightio. Now as you can see, it's all buffed up now. Very particular not to touch it. Once we've done that, we need to make sure inside's spotlessly clean. So there's no dust or anything that's going to stop our stop our uh, adhesive adhering. Is there anything these can't do? Seriously, lighting damp, firewood, they're great. Okay, now we can put our mushroom patch in. Okay. Now we're all clean and ready to go. We can put a bit of glue on there. Now you want a nice even surface. Right out to your chalk marks. As you can see, I'm no Picasso or Van Gogh. A little bit more for extra luck. Okay, if you have a look inside there now, you'll be able to see a nice consistent layer of the cement and we need to let that tack off. Now, depending on the weather and the humidity, how quickly that's going to tack off, that might only take a couple of minutes if you're in Western Australia, which is dry heat, or if you're up in the Territory, considerably longer because of the humidity. What you're after is just after it tacks off, check it with a dry finger, with a dry clean finger, and if it's just tacky, well, you're right to go, and you can put in the mushroom repair, which we'll be doing in a minute. All right, so now we've let that tack off, and I've got Matt, because he's got clean fingers, unlike me, feel it, and he tells me it's tacked off properly. So now what we need to do is we need to insert this into our hole and pull it from the other side. And I'll just grab my Leatherman from the other side pull it through. Okay, now we've got it through all the, other, all the way. We need to grab our stitching tool and make sure we've got no air pockets in there. 
Start at the middle, run over the edge. Start at the middle, run over the edge. Start at the middle, until we've sure got every single air bubble out. Right, now we'll just let that set a bit. Then it's time for the inner liner sealer. Right, now while that's drying, we'll just cut off the tag at the end here. And we'll try and cut it as flush to the surface as possible. There we go. Now we'll let that completely dry, and then we'll put the inner liner sealer on it. Now that's dried off for a while, we've got some inner liner sealer. We're going to paint the entire surface with some inner liner sealer to make sure. Because the, uh, rub, the rubber's pr uh, a little porous, so it will slowly let down a little bit. So we want to make sure we've got an airtight seal there. Paying particular attention to the buff surface, which doesn't have a patch on it, and around the edge of the patch. Now ideally, you'd give that 24 hours before heading off into the wilderness and putting a bit more air pressure in there. If you don't have 12 hours for some reason, it's a good idea to consider putting a tube in the tyre before you're heading off. But again, I'd give it a good 12 hours, overnight will do, and then pressurise it in the morning and keep an eye on it during the day. Righto, so we could, at this stage, we could put the tire back onto the rim. But unfortunately, I stuck a knife through the side wall. So we better get on with the patch repair. So just like before, we need to buff down the surface and we need to work out where our patch is gonna sit. Remember, bead to bead. So it needs to run that way. We're not putting the patch in that way. This patch is reinforced just like a side wall is. So it needs to sit in this way. So we sit it roughly over the top and we mark out the corners. Roughly where it's going to sit. A little bit bigger, that's not a problem. All right, now we've got that sorted out. Play join the dots. And just like before, we have to buff it out. I right, know, I'll see you when I'm finished buffing. Okay, so we've buffed it all up now. Make sure it's 100% clean. I'm just gonna blow it out. Again, I'm very sorry to anyone wearing headphones. And check your patch. And make sure the area you buffed is larger than your patch, which it is. And again, make sure you're not touching any surface there. So you want the adhesive to adhere. Grab your cement out just as before. Put a nice even layer of cement right over the top of the area there. I think I'm upsetting the birds. Righto, now we've put a complete coverage, nice even coverage over the top of 
the area to be patched, the buffed area. We'll leave that tack off again, and then we'll stitch the patch onto there. So we'll see in a few minutes. Okay, so now we've left that tack off, and we've got our patch. We'll just crack the back of it there, right along the edge there, along the spine. Be careful not to get any dirty hands on the patch. Okay, and remember, it's got to go up and down towards the bead and as central over the patch as possible. Preferably push him in from the centre first and then work your way out. Right now, now for the important part, grab your stitching tool. And start from the centre and work your way out. It's imperative that the edges are right down. And we got all the air out. But I'll save you watching me doing this for five minutes. And we'll get back to it when I finish stitching. Okay, so now I've finished stitching the patch. So again, we need to get the inner liner sealer. And I've let it dry a little bit longer, another 10 minutes or so. So it's fairly dry because it's pretty warm today. And I'm going to make sure I completely cover the, especially the edge, concentrating on around the edge and anywhere I've buffed. Because there's nothing worse than a slow leak to drive you nuts. You know, a couple of PSI a week or whatever. So we'll make sure we get a good coverage with the inner liner sealer around anywhere we're buffed and particularly around the edge. And be a bit generous. Now this stuff has a use-by date on it so when you're purchasing it make sure you get one. You're probably not going to use it for a while because you're probably going to get it for a long outback trip or something like that and keep an eye on the on the date on it put it in your google calendar or whatever you're using your iphone calendar not very iphone savvy tell siri i'm sure they'll work it out so you'll know when all your cements and sealers are out of date and you'll have to get some more prior to the next long distance outing you need it for or hopefully don't need it for actually Okay, we've got good coverage with the inner line sealer there now. So we're going to give it a few more minutes. And because we're going to inflate it, I'm going to give that an extra coat in 10 minutes. Then we're going to put the tie back on, and then it'll be the acid test. We'll put a bit of uh, pressure into it and see if she leaks. All right, now comes the reassembly. And again, before, lubricant will be your best friend. Make sure you give a generous amount of lubricant. And what we do is we grab the tie, the wheel, sorry. Now I've orientated this so it goes in the same way and the valve's here and it's lined up with my mark on the other side. So we line up with the valve and we just push it in as best we can. Drop it into the well, which I've done. And now comes the fun with the tire irons. A few moments later. There we go, it's popped in. Beautiful. Okay, now for the other side. So we'll realign that mark with the valve. And again, we'll just start working our way around the edge. Again, plenty of lubrication. Once we've got one edge in, we drop it into the well so we can get the other edge in. First part's the easy part. <laughs> So 
Sometimes you can give it a bit of a push and it'll go in. And simply keep working your way around the edge. Remember to keep the back end, the back side of the bead into the well. Getting there. And of course, just like a bicycle tire, gets tight towards the edge. There we go. Now we're in. Now we have to seat the beads but we'll need an air compressor for that. Right, now when it comes to reseating the bead, I've placed a step under there. You can also use a cut off piece of firewood. Now, I seem to have better luck this way and I've just been to Matt about it and Matt says, no, no, put it on the ground. So drop a comment in the comment section below and let us know how you prefer to do it, whether it's suspended on via the wheel or sitting on the ground and we'll see who wins. All right, now the Schrader valve, of course, is out. And we just keep jiggling it. Remember, keep your fingers out of the gap there. It seems to be actually coming on all right. We can hear the compressor working down. That means there's, uh, it's building up pressure inside. And I can see that's the bottom gone, nearly. And we can see the top still working around the edge here. This, this edge is in. And it'll sometimes take, sometimes take 20 or 30 psi until it's fully seated. And you just heard the pop then, that tells me it's fully seated. And we'll just double check the back. Now of course there's, there's no in the air in there, so all the air's got to come out. If we have a look around that back edge there, that's all completely seated. Now you'll notice we didn't use any propellers. We didn't use WD-40 or CRC or start your bastard or even a can of deodorant. It, it's just no need for it, okay? Maybe if you're doing it on the car in the middle of the night and you want some pyrotechnics, other than that, I mean, that was the Super Center Thumper Max. So it's got a decent amount of output, but it's not by any stretch of the imagination a high output air compressor. And I've done this using the single compressor ARB that runs my air lockers on the 80. So you need a little bit of air pressure, but you certainly don't need a big heap. And there's no need to run for a deodorant can to light it up. You're only putting yourself in unnecessary danger. Okay, so we need to put the Schrader valve back in and pump it up to pressure. All right, so I've got the Schrader valve in the tool and just pop the Schrader valve back in. Now for the acid test, we're going to pump it up to 45 psi and then we're going to get some soapy water and we're going to check both of the repairs. Here we go, a genuine 45 psi. Now I'm gonna get Matt to zoom in so we can do the acid test. Okay, now for the acid test. As you can see, this way I put the knife through the sidewall and let's see if she's leaking. And as you can see, we've got zero bubbles coming out of there. I put my knife through there an hour ago, okay? Full width of my Spyderco Paramilitary 2, if anyone was wondering right through the sidewall of the tyre, and now we have a seal with 45 psi in there, 
that'll get you out of trouble. It's not a legal repair. This is a temporary repair till you can get a new tire. It's got a damage in the sidewall of a radial tire, so it makes it unroadworthy. But if you're in the middle of the Simpson, running down Rig Road, I'd gladly take that tire any day. Okay, now check the plug repair. Now our plug repair is there. So I'll just get a bit of extra soapy water and we'll check that one as well. There we go. Over the top there. And we'll keep an eye here and see if we get any, any extra bubbles. And that mushroom repair is airtight. Now if you're doing a mushroom repair yourself into the tread wall of the tire, so a thumb whips in from the side walls, from the shoulder here, the thumb whip in, anywhere in this area here, and you do a mushroom repair, that's a legal and permanent repair. That'll be good to go, okay? I'll probably run it on the back of the car, not an issue. But your side wall repair, get you out of trouble, get you going again. Right, our covers now. We successfully repaired the tire, so we did a patch repair to a side wall, temporary repair, and a permanent repair, a mushroom patch repair to the tread. Successfully, we've got 45 PS on there. I'll be happy to bolt this to the back of the 80 and drive to the other end of the country with it. It's a good repair. Now, if you enjoyed this video, guys, don't forget to give us the old thumbs up. And if you didn't, by all means, give us the old thumbs down twice. Thanks, guys. We'll see you in the next one. So usually the idea is stand on one side and then bring it up with the other. So push this side into the well and then your second tire iron in. Finally, it's coming. <sighs> right, yeah, that's one bead. And after I sit down the a bonox, we'll do the backside. Ah, oh, stop it. <laughs>